Hello everybody and welcome to the Nexus Gaming Series. I am Jason and I've got an epic matchup for you guys tonight. Coming out of the A Division, we've got Blasting Burrows versus Drop Dead Gorgeous. And not only do we have it uh, queued up and ready to go, but we are dropping directly into game number one here for Infernal Shrines. Thank you guys for joining me tonight. And boy, I am ready to get back to some casting. A full week of playing and practicing and getting ready for our matches and now back to what I'm used to, which is being just a watcher on the wall here and bringing it to you guys live. So we've got uh, Drop Dead Gorgeous, gonna be first pick, first ban here, immediately banning out the Maev. Let me go over those map bans for you guys real quick. It was Blasting Burrows that won the toss. They elected to ban out Towers of Doom, Battlefield of Eternity, then banned out by DDG. Uh, Infernal Shrines picked up here by Blasting Burrows, so uh, they are going to have the uh, not uh, not have the first pick first ban. They're getting the map pick here, and then Braxis Holdout was picked for our map number two. So let me fix that real quick. It's not Dragonshire. It is indeed Braxis Holdout, and rip the draft. I think we had somebody drop. Was it a tactical drop though? Is the question. Probably. I might have gotten off, started off a little bit too fast. I didn't actually see it because I wasn't referee, but we will, uh, that here. Um, right. I have the teams on the wrong side. That's what that was. Okay. I will fix that. There we go. Let me just reconfirm that everybody's ready. Looks like we should have this fixed here. Okay. Got it going so fast that uh, it ran off the rails. That's my bad. Infernal Take two, shrines. action. Infernal Shrines, drop dead gorgeous. So yeah, I was actually calling that backwards because that's right, Blasting Burrows had called and they had, um, they had uh, called wrong on the coin flip. So DDG won the toss. Um, no, now, now I'm just confused. Okay, so yes, the teams, the teams were on the wrong side, and the uh, the pick was on the wrong side, but the. What I called out for the map, the map picks and bans were correct the first time. Blasting Burrows lost the toss. Um, or no, Blasting Burrows won the toss uh, and elected for Infernal Shrines. So, DDG first pick, first ban. They will ban out the Maev, however. So, going right on to that to start. Apologize for the confusion, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, next ban out here for Blasting Burrows. A lot of good options here. Um, the meta is just full of really good heroes at the moment, so there's not really a wrong answer. Phoenix tends to be what people are edging towards in these early ban phases. They are going to choose to take out the Sonya, who, of course, is incredibly strong in the solo lane. Very good shrine clear. And then you start to see what are going to be the big meta picks uh, for both of these teams. Typically, we'll see the less meta stuff come in the second half of the draft. And Stukov right at the top of that meta. Stukov and Malfurion, two of the strongest healers in the game right now. And then you see the Malfurion coming out from Blasting Burrows. They also pick up the Hanzo, who has incredible damage right now and very good Shrine Clear potential with that Q build, particularly the four talent. To get that AoE clear and the extra damage on it as well to... Shrine minions. Uh, tanks is something that neither of these teams have looked at yet, but I'd be surprised if DDG didn't elect to pick up one of the power tanks in the meta right now, which are mainly focused around Diablo and Garrosh, but we could also possibly see 
an ETC coming out. Um, if they want ETC, they don't necessarily have to pick it here, unless they know it's something that Blasting Burrows favors. They might pick it anyway, or if it's something essential to the comp that they want. We'll have to see. You know, ultimately, I feel like this is a good opportunity for them to apply that tank chokehold, pick up Garrosh or Diablo, and ban out the other. Um, they could also be looking at some backline damage. The Hanzo's already picked up for Blasting Burrow, so they will get the Phoenix. who will also offer some pretty strong try and clear. They'll pick up the Garrosh, which will likely proc that Diablo band from DDG. Um, Blasting Burrows doesn't really have that great of a um, chokehold to really apply here, the Drop Dead Gorgeous. But they could elect to ban out... Um, something that they don't want in the solo lane and then pick up their solo laner next. So uh, we might see them go in that direction. They have already banned out the Sonya. Huh. Huh. That's good. So they will ban out the Dahaka. So not wanting to edge towards that... Uh, Global solo lane, also not wanting DDG to have it. Um, Daka, also decent follow-up potential to the Garrosh. Garrosh can toss an enemy straight towards the Dahaka and um, put him right in range for that drag. And we will see DDG queuing up the Diablo, thinking about it a little bit, but we'll toss the Lord of Hell out of the Nexus for this game, ironically on Inferno Shrines. And there it is, Blasting Burrows gonna pick themselves up a Blaze for their solo lane, and they're gonna pick up the Johanna as their main tank. So, uh, hiding what that last pick might be. Uh, do they wanna go with a more melee, assassin, heavy, end gauge comp? Do they wanna go with another backline damage, make it a little bit more patient, poke sort of style play? A couple different options for them here, and I bet that they're holding that to see what DDG has here. They've got two more picks, for DDG, they'll be able to see their entire comp before they make that choice of do they want to go hard and gauge, do they want to back off a little bit. So I really like Blasting Burroughs' graph style here. They're very, very standard so far of what you would expect within the meta. Um, I'll have to see if they want to go off the beaten path at all here, this last pick. But for now, DDG definitely need a little bit more damage. They need their solo laner. Um, we'll have to see where they want to go with that. Uh, so they'll go with Thrall and Jaina. Very interesting. Leo was on the table. Um, is a pretty good counter for the high HP pools over on the side of Blasting Burrows. But instead, they're going to go more all-in damage uh, follow-up for that Garrosh. Of course, Stukov also offering some nice follow-up to that toss with his silence uh, from the Lurking Arm. So not, not too shocked there. Um, Thrall can function in the solo lane, but so can Phoenix. Um, and Tassadar are going to be the pickup here. So a little bit of extra support for Hanzo. And uh, quite a lot of backline damage coming from the Tassadar as well. So pretty good pickup there. We've seen a lot of double support. Uh, Hyper carry Hanzo recently in both the NGS and the HGC meta. So uh, it's been pretty effective. Uh, especially against, you know, more high damage output potential like DDG has. They, they don't have a whole lot of point control potential so much. Um, they have a lot of displacement from Gelda on that Garrosh and the ability to follow it up. But when it comes to hanging around a point and sustaining, that's not really their game. jana has got a lot of burst, but not much sustain damage. Uh, Thrall has some decent sustain and, and self some self healing. Phoenix also, you know, re constantly regenerating that shield, so can get a little bit of value out of that. And Stukov is a good sustained healer, but ultimately their comp is not based around turtling in, such as Blastic Burrows is, which can give you a little bit of a disadvantage here on Infernal Shrines specifically. But we'll see if they can overcome that anyway. Uh, if they do get in there and get the combos, then I like their odds here, but. Let me just say for the record, I approve of the percentage of Carbot portraits that I'm seeing on my screen. 9 out of 10 is really not bad. <laughs> but either way, we are loading in here for game number one on Infernal Shrines. On the left, it is going to be drop-dead gorgeous 
with Pugs Not Drugs on the Thrall. Gelda's going to be on the Garrosh. Chaos is going to be playing Phoenix. Unitas on the Stukov. And C2, uh, C2D2 is going to be on the Jaina. On the right, it is going to be the Blasting Burrows. Tiddly He is going to be on the Johanna. Michael Lan on the Blaze. Pyromaniac is going to be on the Tassadar. Time is going to be on the Hanzo. And Zhao is going to be on the Malfurion. Talents up here for you guys and get everything ready to go. Head on into the mid for the 5v5. We're gonna even gonna see Drop Dead Gore just go ahead and try and get in the way of those minions a little bit. Try and get those minions to spawn a little bit over to their side. And this is what I'm talking about. They want to be able to step forward and try and displace the members of Blasting Burrows, but they really can't afford to just charge directly headlong in. Johanna going in deep enough to help them get the wave clear. Both solo laners will rotate to the top, and the four mans will rotate to the bottom. All right, clean rotations by both teams. Wave clear potential pretty strong for Blasting Burrows. We are gonna see uh, some good wave clear on the other end though. Phoenix, as well as the Jaina, have pretty incredible wave clear potential themselves. Let's see which one of these teams wanna prioritize camps. We do see Michael Ann rotating down. Uh, from the solo lane to help get the wave clear a little bit while he's uh, pushed out the thrall up top pugs playing very carefully looking to just get the soak even letting some of those minions die off denying a little bit of xp to michael and punishing that rotation but not much in reality not not probably not gonna make or break the game i would i would guess but uh either way we will see uh the four man rotation continuing and it does look like drop dead core just is gonna go ahead and make a pit stop for this camp. Gelda's gonna come in and uh, get ready to soak the wave and maybe play a little bit of the Magician's Assistant, kind of not tipping off the members of Blasting Burrows that they were doing that. But on the way down, the Blasting Burrows pick up their own camp as well. Team's just trading out. The bottom camp is a point of contestion here in the early game. Each team can very easily get their passive camp. Um, without too much risk of invasion. I'd say the teams can't invade, but uh, it's kind of risky to do it early unless you maybe have that four talent advantage or just a comp that really allows you to do it without being punished. See the spear throwers cleared out a bit in mid here as they chuck those spears mainly at each other. You know, top lane pugs still, uh, still not actively pushing the lane, and this is smart play. He's allowing... Some of his own minions to die here, which means Michael Ann as he makes these rotations down to mid. This is on the occasional minion, not not too many, I would imagine. He actually makes it up before any of that wave dies off, which is good. They've certainly not really lost any uh, XP in terms of the uh, level advantage here. In fact, the side of Blasting Burrows even have just a little bit of an edge. In the rotation game here but the rotation is huge in here from drop dead gorgeous they're gonna come in and completely shove them off the camp time actually gets tossed in and has to natural agility back over the wall be out just fine though the elder getting poked down a little bit low but that's just gonna give him a little bit of extra armor there on the garage so he's not too worried about that just yet and while Shrine is going to be started by Drop Dead Gorgeous. We're going to be looking to get a little bit of an advantage here. Hanzo with a nice arrow, though, does have that level 4 talent on the Q to get that AoE damage out in a little bit. We'll have to jump back over the wall to reposition the stun comes down with the silence in the chokehold. Time getting very low, and he's going to get blown up here by the Janna combo. Pugs Not Drugs getting a little bit low as well, but he is staying in. He's got those self heals. He's got Chaos up in the top raining down some damage and it's going to be drop dead gorgeous to get that first blood and are going to end up getting the advantage here on the shrine we immediately see blasting burrows rotating their members out the side soak the lanes michael ann goes directly to top here this is going to be the first punisher of the game a frozen punisher going over to drop dead gorgeous fire maniac baits it over the wall hits that stasis on himself there it's going to able to avoid really uh, taking any damage or CC from the Punisher jumps. 
We will see the roots uh, coming out from Gelda, or coming onto Gelda, but he will have that self unstoppable. Let's go ahead and walk away from that. Oh, they're gonna get the front wall. A little bit of damage here on the fort. Pyromaniac even popping the shield there to take just a little bit away from that Punisher's value. But ultimately, that's kind of what you would expect. We do see um, C2, D2 rotating out to side soak the lanes. So pretty much even on XP from both of these teams. A little bit of extra um, fort damage in the bot. But that's that's really all that, that uh, Drop Dead Gorgeous gets out of uh, out of their prize there. That one kill and the Punisher. Toss in on a tiddly he, nice groundbreaker to follow it up. And the damage is there, but that is onto a Johanna. Very tanky. Jaina ends up taking more damage in return. Gelda as well getting poked down a little low. Time is just kind of having its way down here at the bottom of this team fight. Not really being contested too hard uh, on that Hanzo. Except but maybe by the spear thrower. Spear thrower just kind of uh yeah, that Kazra. The Kazra knows who to focus. Kazra was like, uh, heroes? Team? Heroes? Anzo, right here. We'll see the rotation continuing from Michael Ann here. I can clear both of these lanes out. Gonna have to get back to the top. Pugs to clear this one aggressively. Maybe try and stop the rotation, but, uh, we'll do -si do there around the vision and two ships passing in the night. Level 10 is coming on soon for both of these teams. We'll see uh, just a slight edge here for Blasting Burrows. Not really enough to really take an advantage of. We do see the camp being cleared out here. And the cap will be stalled from DDG. They're going to look to pick that up a little bit later. As the next shrine will be in mid. As long as they have vision on all five members, they don't really have to worry about the uh, invasion. Chaos going to have to teleport out of that situation. But I like the I like the prepped camp. It's it's not taken yet, but uh, they're just not worried about an invade at this point. They didn't really show the rotation to top. It was two members. All the rest were in lane. So, I think some pretty smart cookies here in the division A to figure out that they had already prepped that camp. They could check it, but they don't have any global vision. They only have the vision from Tassadar. That's uh, you, know, you can see about the range there on that vision popped it we'll see the camp capped as the shrine spawn and we'll see on the other side blasting burrows gonna rotate out and grab this camp i suppose they do also have the hanzo vision but he's still got to be within a certain range to to throw that out and check it it's a pretty long range granted iromaniac that's right What's up, Dipper? Welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining me. Pretty epic matchup here. Game number one still ongoing. Pretty even so far, but we will see the nice root coming out from Pugs. He's gonna proc the, uh... Oh, the retreat a little bit here, but Gelda actually being taken down by that Archon from the Tassadar. The return kill does come on Blaze, but only after, uh, t uh we also see Phoenix go down. Jane is gonna fall. Johanna down as well. It's a bloodbath here. Two-man root by Pugs as he's trying to get in after time. Silence is going to come down as well, but Pugs is getting poked down very low. And I don't know if Unitas is going to be able to save him here, or himself for that matter. As we see Garrosh just now coming back to life, I'm going to look to try to engage here. Pugs trying to zone for Unitas, and at the end of the day, teams are going to end up uh, having to walk away from each other a bit here. Gelda is back. And so is Chaos, so they're going to look to try and contest this. They are about six minions behind, so they've got to do something real quick here if they want to finish off this shrine. And it looks like they're going to focus, try to focus it down, but only three minions left. Gelda getting poked down low. We are going to see uh, actually get interrupted there on Chaos that old, uh, from the Phoenix, but not quite able to uh, finish the cast there. And we will see the Mortar Punisher coming out now. Or the side of Blasting Burrow. So they're able to finish that off. Get a nice advantage in the team fight. Uh, the side of Drop Dead Gorgeous didn't give up on it. But neither did Blasting Burrows. Nice toss back there to, to get the Condemn away from Chaos. 
Phoenix's one big uh, weakness is if he's hard engaged on. And uh, Gelda doing a nice job making sure Tiddly he not have the chance to do that. Punisher will be baited over the wall here by Chaos. Punisher taking down the shields. Not really getting much actual damage onto Chaos. Well, front wall is under assault here from Blasting Burrows. Nobody side soaking here. Um, nobody really looking to get that level advantage. Everybody focused on um, trying to affect the Punisher's value there. Let's get the front wall of the keep. That's pretty good for a second Punisher, I'd say. Quick invade and camp grab by Blasting Burrows as DDG was clearing that up. Toss over and taunt onto onto uh, Johanna. Tiddly he tanky enough to make it out of there with the double support on the other side. Nice nice toss from Gelda. At the end of the day, once again, when, when you're getting the Johanna, that's not really the target that you're looking for. Camp going to be grabbed on the bot. Arrow comes out. We're trying to get the initiation onto Jaina. We will see the massive shove coming out from Unitas. Going to take Pyro out, but Garrosh is going to fall in return. Ton of damage falling down there from the Hanzo. Time now jumping over the wall, looking for Pugs, not Drugs, as well has that shield. Very tanky Hanzo. Very confident to be able to step forward here. And now this bottom fort is going to be sieged up here. It's going to be an easy grab for the side of Blasting Bros. Get them a nice chunk of that XP of what they need to get to level 16. And they're going to look at the front wall, which will have the rest of the XP that they're looking for for that talent tier advantage. Akuma, thank you for the fall or for the host. That raiding party, welcome guys. I appreciate it. We're gonna see the front wall going down here, and level 16 is picked up. Chaos stepping forward a little bit, does get hit by the condemn. Is gonna be able to back up there. Had Gelda in tow there as well, so not too much worry. Meanwhile, Pugs not drugs doing work on the uh, top fort front wall hit the b button and get out of dodge as the members of blasting burrows have kind of fallen out of vision here on the map uh, they're just grabbing the camp nice denial play here and we will see for the moment just teams Cleaning up, picking up the camps. Talk a little bit about the heroics here for both sides. There's going to be the uh, Earthquake along with uh, the Water Elemental. Massive Shove, Warlord's Challenge, and it is going to be the Purification Savo coming out for DDG. Now we're going to have Drop Bunker, Archon, Dragon Arrow, Twilight Dream, and the Blessed Shield for Blasting Burrow. So, um... No big shockers. Pretty much standard across the board. Uh, could make an argument for Ring of Frost on this map specifically, but we've seen a lot of value plays. Oh, meanwhile, Pugs Not Drugs getting caught out. Earthquake is going to be dropped, but I don't think that is going to be enough. Does hit the five. Man, Root, though. Pugs hitting the lineup there. And that's, you know, not only is that going to give him a little bit of breathing room through the CC... Also going to give him a lot of extra healing uh, through the uh, self-sustain, the trait. That's a quick camp grab here for Blasting Burrows. They still do have the 16 talent tier advantage, and this shrine is up here in bot. So this is, a, this is a lane that's already been prepped for the side of Blasting Burrows, and DDG does not want to give this up for free, but it's starting to look like in the count, what can they really do? We're going to go ahead and back up. I kind of like that call. You can try and charge in with your 16 talent tier, but that's not really the comp for DDG. I think that's a classic mistake that teams will make. Um, maybe not in the heroic division and the A division, but in a lot of lower tier play. Is you look at it and you think, yeah, well, we have to go in to try to challenge this with 16, but that's not their comp. They isolate one target and blow them up. They don't really charge headlong in and so uh playing the comp smart here i like this now we'll see the jump in here and the stun chain coming down and garrosh maybe not respecting the follow-up damage potential of that punisher jump very nice capitalization though by blasting burrows picking themselves up a big kill here 
And they're going to be able to pick up the keep and going to be looking for even more. The Punisher will jump onto Pugs. Going to try and back up. Actually dodges the Condemned after that. They're looking at trying to take down the Punisher is is uh, the side of DDG. But Blasting Burrows are on the core. The Punisher turns around and selects the core as well. And that is going to be it. Game number one here on Infernal Shrines. Going over to Blasting Burrows. Very strong performance coming out from these guys. I did like the comp a little bit more um, in terms of map objective priority. Being able to siege up and turtle up a little bit better in that cycle. But uh, Drop Dead Gorgeous had some good team fights as well. You know, they had the Phoenix. They had the Clear. They had, um, you know, solid, solid play on the front line there from Pugs. But just not quite beefy enough, I think. I think you, know, you have to have a little bit more um, sustainability. And with the squishy comp that they had, it's gonna it's gonna make it tough um, to be able to stay in for long periods of time. They kind of had the burst damage approach, and it's just it's just not it's not super strong unless unless you can engage hard. And Garrosh doesn't doesn't really give that to you. He he, he gives the ability to go in and get one maybe two targets um, consistently, but. Really, you just back up from the Garrosh long enough to uh, find the engage on the backliners. So, solid play coming out from both of these teams, but ultimately, Blasting Burrows will achieve their game number one win. And uh, went on to map number two, which is going to be on Barax's holdout. Get this lobby set up for you guys and get going a ASAP. Hey. Here. All right. All right, looks like we got just about everybody into the lobby. So this is going to be the map pick for DDG, so we'll see if they have anything special planned. Make sure both teams are ready to go. You gotta get the hats on the right people, you know. I would know. I'm an I'm an ex. I'm kind of an expert in funny hats. <laughs> huh. We're not really here. All right, we do have everybody set up in lobby, but it looks like we got one AFK. So we'll take a little quick look at Brax's holdout, which of course is a very it's a pretty unique map. Um, the only one that's really like it uh, in the meta is, of course, Dragonshire, which also has sort of similar mechanics in terms of the map objective and the rotations that you have to have here. But we will go on in to game number two on Brax's holdout. First pick, first ban. Going to be going over to Blasting Burrows. But definitely a different map style from Infernal Shrines, where map objective is very uh head to head very time sensitive where here on braxis it can be stalled out for forever as you swap between these beacon phases um sustain is definitely a priority here along with massive amounts of wave clear so it does have that in common with infernal shrines yeah a lot of tacitar value you're definitely right 
about that. Middo calling it out. Middle calling, calling it out here. Iromaniac. Solid value. It also really helped with the blow up comp as well, I think. But either way, we will see the Malfurion being banned out here by Blasting Burrows. Interesting ban to start this off. Um, means they're probably looking for a Stukov to start off this draft. Uh, they want to deny the second, well, I should say the other good healer in the meta. And so I like this. DDG queues up the Stukov and says, well, if we can't have one, then nobody gets one. And they'll have to play with somewhat inferior uh, supports, so to speak on both sides. Also worth noting that on Braxis, you you have to have a sustained healer. Uh, well, ideally you want one more than a burst healer. So if you have one of these colossal sustain healers, it can be very difficult to deal with that. But this time Blasting Burros is gonna elect to first pick the Garrosh. So gonna try and have that displacement uh, in their toolbox this time around. Probably we'll see the Diablo on the other side for DDG. Um, again, you know, you kind of have two tanks that are sort of towering above the rest of the meta right now in the Garrosh and the Diablo, but DDG could decide to just get a, you know, kind of try to corner the market on damage here. Hanzo definitely available. Um, could end up maybe going into the Maev if they want to. Maybe it's a little early. Phoenix, of course, also. Still available and very strong on this map. I shall do Here we go again. Alex Straza and Chromie. Very interesting. So we do see a lot of value come out from Alex Straza. Good sustained healer. Um, also with that Dragon Queen, does have the ability to really make a push in for a beacon if you're really needed at a certain time to either try and cap it to finish off a charge, try and cap it to stop a charge that you think might max out the opponent, the opposing teams. Um, Zerg Wave, and just in general, it, it's great for point control, and 310 is just a very strong tool in your toolbox. We know how Chromie has the ability to deal a lot of damage from a very safe distance, very far away from Garrosh. One of the best ways to control a Garrosh is to just not have to be around him to end gauge, which on Brax's holdout can be pretty difficult. Uh, eventually, you want to be able to go fight in on these points. So having Garrosh on your team, you know, kind of forces the opponent to make a tough decision. Do they want to give you that end gauge that Garrosh is begging you for, or do you want to just concede the shrines? Or not the shrines, but the, the beacon points. So we will see Genji and Sonya picked up here. So very strong solo lane hero for Blasting Burrows. And also kind of gives them the opportunity to apply two different chokeholds here. Um, they could either chokehold the solo, uh, the solo laner position or the tank position. Um, I kind of expect the Diablo ban coming in here, but it doesn't have to be Diablo. Um, DDG could also go with Johanna, and it would still be pretty strong here. We saw that be kind of the counter to Garrosh um, the last game, but, you know, it flipped the teams around. Uh, so they might actually just ban out the Johanna. We'll see. They could also, again, you know, decide to try and apply the chokehold to that um, solo lane. But meanwhile, DDG banning here. Wouldn't be surprised to see them just ban out a healer. Now we could see maybe the uh, Lucio banned out or the Rhaegar. So there's the Rhaegar ban. Uh, strong. It's a pretty strong combo with Genji. Able to put that lightning shield on him to give him extra damage when he does dive in. And the Ancestral if he gets in trouble while he's in there. Also a good combo with Garrosh for that Ancestral. Uh, Garrosh with all that armor usually gives you the time you need to pretty consistently hit those Ancestrals. And it's good with Sonya. I mean, really, uh, a solid ban out here from DDG. They didn't want to see that uh, Rhaegar on the other side. It opens them up Uther, but um, Uther is not really the healer that you want on this map. First heals can be decent against Chromie, I'll admit, but at the end of the day, the fighting in the lane over these beacons takes a very long time. You want a sustained healer, you don't really want the Uther, but we will see Blaze banned out, so they do decide to go with the Chokehold for the uh, solo lane, and I really like that too, because you could try to apply that tank Chokehold, 
But really there are two viable options and you can't ban them both. So you might as well just let them through and ban something more valuable. So Blasting Burrows is going to take out the Blaze. But for DDG, I feel like this has got to be a Johanna. Um, they don't have to pick it here, but ideally you want to get your tank calls. and your... Um, I, serve. I was going to say solo laner, but they're actually just going to pull out the... They're just going to directly pull out the Zera tool here. Um, I was going to say because you can hide some of these more non-meta picks, these kind of, you know, quirky style of, of heroes like Zeratul. But instead, Drop Dead Gorgeous just going to walk in and say, hey, here I am, Zeratul's. Well, we're going. Uh, it does give the I, the opportunity for Blasting Burrows to try to counterpick the Zeratul. Um, if, right now, if I'm, if I'm Blasting Burrows, I'm looking for something to constantly be able to reveal the Zeratul. Um, Chromie's on the other side. Um, so they may, they may have just picked it to deny it. I don't know if, I don't know how good, uh, Genji's Zeratul would be for Blasting Burrows, but, uh, Zeratul does have trouble against Chromie, but not much. Logical it's a perfect day for some mayhem. Pyromantic. Okay, you got it. Pyromantic. I appreciate it. So we'll see the Abathur coming out. Very interesting. No support. No true support, anyway. It's the Abathur solo support for Blasting Burrows, which we see a lot in Quick Match lately. Uh, and we've seen it We've seen it showcased a couple times in, in HGC here and there. Um, definitely definitely an interesting uh, strat, though. Let's see if it works out for him. Uh, of course, Abathur are able to give you a little bit of shielding, uh, at the end of the day, you need some good sustained heroes. Pull it off. The Garrosh, of course, does have massive amounts of self-sustain uh, in the form of that armor to keep try and keep himself alive. Sonya, of course, very, able to self-heal pretty well. And the Junkrat with just massive amounts of wave clear. So a little bit of a risky pick, but we'll see if it works out for him here. We're all going to be picked up once again for DDG. All right. It'll be interesting to see which strategy wins out here. Abathur, um, we've seen a little bit of the Abathur play in the pro scene on Brax's holdout. This is where we see that comp be pulled out um, in the pro play. So, uh, yeah. Especially with the Zeratul. It's not it's not as good of an Abathur counter as it used to be. Um, because of the reveals. Bahamut Gaming, thank you very much for the host. Welcome everybody. Keeping it in the NGS family, I appreciate it. Got game number two starting up for you guys here. So you guys stopped by just in time to see the last game of the series. On the left, it is going to be Drop Dead Gorgeous looking to pull this thing to a draw. Gelda, going to be playing the Johanna. We're going to have Chaos on the Chromie. Unitas is going to be on the Alexstrasza. Pugs Not Drugs playing the Zeratul. And C2D2 on the Thrall. Meanwhile, on the right, it is going to be Blasting Burrows. Zhao is going to be on the Abathur. Michael Lan is going to be on the Sonya. We're going to have Time on the um, Genji, the, the other Shimada. Pyromantic is going to be on the Junkrat. And Tiddly He is going to be on the Garrosh. Yes, do not adjust your screens, ladies and gentlemen. This is a solo Abathur support comp coming out here from Blasting Burrows. Very spicy. For now, we're going to see the 2 2 split. As we see two members of Blasting Burrows here. And it's actually the 3 2 split. 
coming out from DDG. So they were pre completely prepared for this. Either that, or they just had the Zero Tool up at top, looking to maybe try and uh, get a gank early. I'll uh, quick wave clear from both teams on bot. And I'll look to re-engage. But right now, Blasting Burrow is being pretty passive. Uh, not a big shock here. You would expect this comp, you know, just like with any Abther comp, to struggle a little bit before level 10. Um, uh, we'll have to see how they how they react to this in terms of rotations and trying to stall out that advantage because if you it, it can be a pretty snowbally map if you lo lose these early objectives. Uh, we'll see if that does end up being a hindrance indeed. Bugs taking a little bit of uh, harass there in time. See the immediate cap here in top. The nice thing about having Genji on this map, it's almost a pseudo global. He's able to s rotate so quickly between these two beacon points. He's really able to affect uh, both lanes a lot of the time. And we'll see uh, Hugs in a lot of trouble here. Time able to get back to him. Get the finishing blow there. Time maybe not deciding to go in. We'll see for now. Side of Blasting Burrows winning that top lane. Drop Dead Gorgeous holding strong in the bot. And Chaos doing a nice job of getting some siege damage out here. Constantly going to be throwing those... Uh... Constantly going to be throwing those abilities out to try and poke on the other end. Nice wave clear potential as well. Especially with Gelda on the Johanna and those condemns to be able to bring them in to the circle as that sand falls on down. Already a lot of the bottom wall down here. While in the top, not getting as much value for Blasting Burrows. We've gotten the kill and a little bit of a level advantage, actually. We did see Drop Dead Gorgeous not being able to soak the top lane for a bit of time there. Early camp started here by Michael Ann. Looking to put the first camp on the map here on top. Oh, a time. D2-D2, very low. We're looking to go back and forth a little bit. Both of them kind of uh, tiptoeing around, seeing if they want to go in onto it. Let's see for now. Here Bottom wall saying. totally gone. Enthrall does end up falling. I wondered. I wondered if he was going to go in, and he definitely did. And while we do see the camp Pushing on up to the top lane, so now's the time for Blasting Burrows to really be able to uh, get some value here. You see Chaos and Unitas up here as Gelda pushing in onto the point along with Pugs. And a uh, whole 2% charge there for Blasting Burrows. Get our first percentage cap of the game. I'm going to be on point here. Have to be careful. Charge actually back onto Chaos. Not careful at all this time. He says, no thank you. I've got the Abther hat. You should know the value of that by now, Jay, that Abther hat. Michael Ann in a ton of trouble though. Gonna be killed in return there. And now time also uh, caught in a little bit too deep. Pugs goes in, but actually gets blown up in response. I'm still in trouble back here. We'll Swift Strike out and gets the Unitas. Uh, Time says, I am not in danger, I am the danger. And while Thrall falling in the bot lane, Hidley He and Pyromantic taking the, taking the big plays here, and now looking to invade the camp. Trying to be very aggressive down here. And as is the case in most Braxis games, fights all over the place. But we will see for now the cap for Blasting Burrows. Do a nice job of uh, taking advantage of that momentary loss in uh, bodies on the map here for DDG. Camp is successfully stolen though on the bottom side for Blasting Burrows. And now once again having that camp advantage, they'll look to jump in and uh, a little extra siege. Nice zoning there on the concussion mine. Being, uh, C2, D2's job just a little bit harder. 
terms of clearing that out. Top retaken by DDG, and now they're going to be looking to push it in a little bit with this massive minion wave. Time just barely dodging the combo there. And while camp invasion is on, Pug's taking a decent amount of damage and we're going to be looking for an opportunity to go back in. Healing going to be popped. Unitas going to go ahead and pop that Dragon Queen. Looking for the extra damage, but Zeratul ends up going down. Michael Land going to fall in return, though, as Unitas dealing just a ton of damage with that breath, getting a lot of sustain out. Junk Rat falls. And while they do successfully convert the camp for Blasting Burrows, it's going to be rough for them in terms of the map objective as they lose two. Two to one on the exchange, I should say. Now it's going to be held by... Uh, both of these beacons going to be held by DDG, I should say. While camp being cleared out here by three members of the Drop Dead Gorgeous and the camp being contested. Time able to get on that point just long enough to cap it and stop the progress at 52%. But uh, level 10s, the race to level 10 definitely being won here by Blasting Burrows. No doubt about it. They are going to get these 10s first. Well, I should say they'll get them if it continues the way it's uh, supposed to go. Don't want to have to eat my words too early in this game. See Michael Ann working on another camp here. The advantage that Sonya gives you, really. Constantly get those camps. D2, D2, uh, C2, D2. We caught out a little bit here. A ton of harass. Wow, time. Also finding pugs on the back end. Gonna have a pretty easy kill picked up there. Zeratul, one of the most mobile heroes in the game before Genji came out. Now the value a little bit tougher to really take advantage of. Chaos, meanwhile, is going to be in all kinds of trouble. Makes it a lot further than I thought it would. Unitas, though, going to end up going down. And actually, both of them dying to Abathur, of all things. The double Genji, though. Boy, that isn't scary. Nice Groundbreaker once again by Tiddly He, but Abathur with the kill steals, even with just the Abathur hat. We will see both the beacons capped here. Four Blasting Burrows, and at long last, the first beacon phase will come to an end. As the boss is being picked up here as well by Blasting Burrows. This is something I'm not sure that DDG can really try to try to uh, oh, contest. But actually, Blasting Burrows disagree. They're going to back off, and in fact, DDG is going to take that and say, Okay, well, we'll just go ahead and take it in. Void Prism goes down to try and zone them, and it is long enough. We actually see uh, C2-D2 throwing out the Sunder just to make sure that they couldn't counter-engage it. So while the Zerg wave is pushing in top is not quite as uh, robust as the Zerg wave and bot for Blasting Burrows, there is going to be an Archangel walking in behind it to deal quite a bit of damage. And we will see the side of DDG fall back to their keep to try and defend the Zerg wave that's coming in. And they will be able to do that pretty well. Decent uh, wave clear for DDG's comp here. All right. So Zerg waves cleared out. Amps will uh, come back up. And uh, pretty much only stuff for DDG to try and take here. Blasting Burrows, of course, will look for the invade. See if they can find anybody out to try to gank. It doesn't seem like healing's really been that much of a problem for Blasting Burrows. Charge in. Very aggressive approach there. Now does uh, keep that copy safe there with the deflection. And Gelda gets caught out there. Very solid concussion mine there from Pyromantic. But displaced the Johanna. Despite the Iron Skin mechanic. Which is particularly impressive if you can get a Johanna displaced. Well-timed. Right now, 12 kills to 3, by the way. Very potent and uh, fatal comp here for Blasting Burrows. I'm acting as the living ward over this camp. Now, this is a rough part of the game for DDG. Uh, 
this is something that will often happen to teams on Braxis holdout where you're down talent tier advantages, especially in the downtime, there's really nothing you feel like you can do. Italy, he also uh, around looking to try and see if he can find anybody to toss. Not quite finding anybody caught out too far. Camps will continue to be the priority here for Blasting Burrows. But once you find yourself behind on this map, it can be very difficult to catch up. You have to let the waves come into you. It's a small two-lane map with not a lot of places to safely rotate and pick up XP. You also really can't come out to contest the, uh, the map objectives at all. There's no real way to poke out or try and sneak your way through. It's two obvious rotation points. It's very difficult to play from behind, but... DDG is slowly making their way towards 13. Beacons are up now. Blasting Burrow's going to rotate directly to them. I don't know. DDG might want to think about taking a fight down 13 here. Not ideal, but 13 not exactly the most uh, influential of talent tiers. Meanwhile, Chaos gets tossed out and completely blown up. Tiddly He finding himself a Chromie. We will see Unitas able to pop that uh, Searing Flame just in time. Michael Land getting caught down health there, but is able to spin and stay alive. And it's going to be a four for nothing. And Gelda is all alone here with all five members of Blasting Burrows on the chase. They'll be able to finish him off and make it a full team ace. And we've got the camp and the entire Zerg wave rolling on into the top lane. Taking down the structures and blasting Burrows. Coming out here saying, We don't need no stinking supports. The kind words of Abathur are all we really need. They're going to be marching through the top lane. The keep gets absolutely melted by all the damage coming out from blasting Burrows. We are going to see the counter engagement attempt here from DDG. Quite a big ask as Gelda is going to be tossed in, taunted. Unstoppable comes down, but Pugs gets very low time, able to charge in and get that finishing kill. Tiddly he kind of low on the back end, but now the core is kind of low as well. And they're going to be looking to finish it off the Zerg Wave. Also looking at that as well. And just like that, Blasting Burrows find themselves a big win here on Braxis Holdout for game number two, and they will score the domination. I love it. Love the comp coming out here. So something that uh, I was talking about with uh, a couple members of my teammates just uh, last night, actually. Kind of unorthodox Avatar solo support comp. And ironically, you actually just take a look at the numbers. 27k healing slash, you know, shielding to the 23k of Alex Draza. And that's mostly just, you know, you can't heal people if they're dead, you know. Just the, so much burst damage potential. They just got on the backliners, and Johanna was, you know, the one least often dead and the one who was uh, the, the last to die. So good focus targeting here by Blasting Burrows. Just in general, very strong game coming out from these guys as they do score the domination. I'll give you guys one final snapshot at the talents. We didn't even make it to 16, ladies and gentlemen. So we were close. We were close. Blasting Burroughs almost had it, but uh, we do end up with a big win for them. They're going to score themselves three points in the standings, and that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. Thank you very much for coming out and watching. I'm going to toss you over to another NGS match. If I can, I'll take a look at the schedule and see if anybody else is casting right now. Um... Like Murda started a match at eight, so that might still be going on. Uh, we'll have to see if that is indeed the case. I will take a look to see if Freeload, Team Maroon are still playing. If not, we'll uh, look to pass you guys off to something else NGS related. But either way, thank you very much for joining me tonight, guys. I am Jason, and for NGS, see you guys next time. Have a good night. <laughs>